wonderful job today grasping the concept of how we float through the chords going from whole step whole step half step whole step whole step whole step half step makes sense when you play it in other keys as being a pattern but when you're learning the instrument and knowing that this is a c major and you see that this is an open e note this is an open c which is the same as that note and it's actually the same as that note in unison this one just happens to be an octave lower. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So these two are in unison, and this one is a whole step down. This is an E, and when you play this high G here, it gives you your major triad. C, D, E, F, and G. If you take away the second and the fourth, you have the first, the third, and the fifth. I haven't flattened my third scale degree, which would make my majors a minor, like we saw today with the C major shortening and getting rid of this E to an E flat. So we have a partial bar of the whole third fret, except for this other C. Yeah, so that's a C minor, C major. But the chords we've worked on thus far, you should be able to look at your F major by doing your spider scale and then stopping on your E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Get rid of your second and your fourth and you have F, A, and C. This is my F. This is my C, and this is my A. So when you play an F, and you've got your first finger on the first fret on the E string, that makes an F. E to F, that's that half step we are talking about, the Do, Re, Mi, C, D, E, F. So when you have your fingers on there, that triad it builds is a major triad. Knowing that you've got F, A, and C, and that your A is a natural note a if you flatten your median your third scale degree it's called the median to a a flat you have this to that but it feels weird to have your fingers go from f to that so you move your fingers to make that and then you add your pinky here for a c because c is already in the chord c c c c c c except now you're covering all the strings that you need to so f major f minor Moving the third is what we're going to be working on in the next couple weeks, but it doesn't mean we have to get it perfect on the first try. All of this is practice, so go slow and have fun. What we're going to do right now is show why that whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step is going to be your major Ionian mode. In the key of C, you've got three open notes, so it looks and feels weird, but the pattern is exactly the same no matter what key you're in, right? Just so happens here, I'm in a D. In the key of D, there are two sharps. And what we worked on today is when you go around the circle fifths, your starting note is your C major. So you've got a C, D, E, F, G. G is five notes away from C. So circle fifths says that G has one sharp. That sharp is your F sharp. If you were to play G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, that F is a half step lower than F, which should be the F, G, the lending tone. So your seventh interval in a major scale is going to be a diminished chord. Meaning, if you go through all of your scale preferences in C, which we're getting to, but you'll see this, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, a minor, B diminished, and then C major. If you didn't have that diminished or the minors in there, it would sound very bland, like eating the same oatmeal every day, no salt, no pepper, no sugar, no syrup, no anything. C major, D major, E major, F major, G major, B major, C major. It loses something, but if you add the second degree, third degree, and sixth degree as minor chords rather than major chords, it gives tone and flavor. And then the seventh scale degree, which we went over today, is always going to be a diminished or a dominant, but in a major chord, in a major scale, that seventh tone is a lending tone. It feels as if it's, it's a half step away and it feels as if it's gonna fall onto that next right note. The ear naturally wants to hear it as a moving tone. So we would have a C major, D minor, E major, no, that's E, e minor, F major, G major, A minor, here's the weird one, B diminished, C major. 
So what we worked on today was spotting our triads, major or minor, and what happens when you go up in that key after writing out C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then the resolution back to C. C is a major chord because you've got C, E, and G, and then if you move up, you will notice that your next chord, your next triad, is not a major triad because D has two sharps, one is F sharp, but if you move up those, Scale degrees of one, three, five from C, your second triad group phrasing will be a minor with a, a D, an F, and an A. Meaning that F is not an F sharp to make a major. It has an F sharp, which is an F, and that F makes it a minor. We'll go more over this concept in the future here, but seeing that helps when you're doing the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So in the key of C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, no sharps. We discovered in the key of C sharp, there are seven sharps. That means every single note is going to be a sharp, which is weird because our E sharp is actually an F, our B sharp is actually a C, and it doesn't really fit <laughs> unless you're playing in that key to name them those because because we would not say say things twice twice i wouldn't say c sharp d sharp b sharp f sharp g sharp a sharp uh c flat c sharp it would be weird <laughs> so here it is c sharp d sharp e sharp f sharp g sharp a sharp b sharp c sharp and as you can see c sharp that's the C sharp. C, C sharp, D, D, E flat or D sharp, E, E sharp or F? <laughs> That's another one. So between C and B and between E and F, it's a half step. So when we're doing Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, Do, all these are the same pattern. So I'm going up from C string, skipping a whole step, going right above that C string to the E string and playing the note right above it. So in this case, I've got a E, F sharp, G sharp. And if you slow down to see the E has four sharps because of the circle fifths, G is five notes from C, it has one sharp. D is five notes from G, the previous note, it has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. Guess what comes next? A sharp, not A sharp, but A. And A has three sharps, guess what those are? F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. E has four sharps. Guess what those are? E, F sharp, G sharp, and that half step, one, two, three, from that G sharp has to go to an A because A is alphabetically after G. So E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and then we go back to. So if you keep moving all the way up through the, the, through the sharps, through the circle fifths, you could go to anything that, like B. B has five sharps. When you go through that, you'll notice that one's F sharp, one's C sharp, one's G sharp, one's D sharp, and then of course, the last one will be A, because all those are fifths away. When we go over the flats, they just go in force, the opposite way, counterclockwise. And we'll talk about that next week. Anywho, I really enjoyed seeing you this week. I'd like you to take your G major, starting on the D, make the bookend with your B, and put your finger down here on the G to make the triad. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is take your first finger off, second finger where your first finger was, put your third finger where your second was, and then bring your pinky onto the fretboard. You're gonna be making the same chord. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a whole note and count one, two, three, four, two, switch, two, three, four, three, switch, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. See how I'm moving my fingers right as I get done and then I come back for the one, blah, 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 chord, switch it, wait for it, do, do, do. That's gonna make you a little bit more efficient moving these chords between the two. And then as soon as you get your, just your whole notes that count out four beats, two, three, four, try half notes. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. See how I'm moving my fingers quicker, but I'm always coming down for that half note in rhythm. If my hand was swinging and I was doing ghost notes, I would still have four, four going to three, What you wanna do is start slow. And then eventually lead into your quarters. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And then when you can switch between the two chords automatically while keeping quarters. 
then introduce our rhythm exercise. One, two, three, four, one. Get ready for the switch. And now with two, two, over and over again. And then next week we'll talk about moving this note to here to make this G major a G major seven. And then switch this note from a G major to that note to make a G seven, which is a dominant seven. It's good seeing you. See you next week.